Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Fraser Fernhead from a company called The House Crowd. We were the first property crowdfunding company um, to set up in the world. Now, it's always been drilled into me um, by my father that it was very important to provide for your retirement. Um, I remember pension advisors coming round to my workplace. I started life as a, as a lawyer in the city. Um, but pensions never really grabbed me. It just didn't appeal to me. It seemed as though the only people really benefiting or the main beneficiaries were the pension companies themselves. The stock market is great, but it seems to be very um, up and down, lots of variables beyond my control. My father and my grandfather both involved in property, so property was kind of in my blood, and it seemed um, to me that was the best way to go about providing for my retirement. So since 1994, I've built up a portfolio of buy-to-let properties, and for the last 15 years, I've been helping other people um, do the same. Then it came to 2008, and we all know what happened there. And I saw many of my friends who leveraged property portfolios, property developers, go bust, um, banks pull funding from them, and many of them went bankrupt or spent years going through very, very hard times. So 2012, when I came to set up the house crowd, I wanted to set it up to give the ordinary person in the street who hasn't necessarily got hundreds of thousands of pounds to invest, the opportunity to provide for their retirement by investing in property in a predictable and consistent and safe way. And that's why I set up the house crowd. And over the course of the last five years, um, that's what we've done. We've raised more than 67 million pounds from retail investors, investing everything from 1,000 pounds upwards to several hundred thousand pounds. We're an FCA regulated company and we have about 15,000 members on the website. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is an investment strategy that may well be new to you. You may know it exists, but you weren't aware you could invest in it. But it's something that very, very wealthy people, such as multimillionaires and billionaires, have been investing in for decades. And it's called short-term secured lending. Is everyone familiar with that, otherwise known as bridging finance? People know what that is? Not, not many of you. OK, well. There are many advantages to this strategy, and it basically enables you to make very consistent and predictable returns whether the market is falling or um, flat or growing. So it's something that may be very, very attractive to you. And I'm going to explain today how you don't need to be a billionaire to get involved in this strategy anymore, and through crowdfunding platforms like ours, and like, like there's probably about 20 or 30 property crowdfunding platforms out there. Who, but sorry, who's, who's actually aware of property crowdfunding that it exists? Quite a few of you. OK, well, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's essentially now, um, it's growing at about 100% a year. It was 88% this year. It's worth about £2 billion a year at the moment in terms of um, the UK market. Globally, it's forecast to reach about £250 billion by 2021. So it's very, very new, but it's growing very, very quickly as more and more people become aware of it. So first of all, let's just cast your mind back to 2008. We'd had about 14 years of pretty spectacular property growth, where properties were growing at double digits, 10, 11% a year, <laughs> stock market was booming. You know, people thought the party would never end. You know, people were basically able to get 100% mortgages on their property, flip that property and make a, prop make a profit from it before the ink had even dried on their mortgage. People used to say things like, oh, it's as safe as houses, we well, can't go wrong with property. But then 2008 came along and you found out, well, actually, you can go wrong with property. It's not as straightforward um, and as safe as you think it might be. So, as I said, many people had borrowed heavily in 2008. I personally saw lots of developers um, and property investors who are highly leveraged being forced into bankruptcy by the banks um, or struggled for years. I myself, I, I, as I said, I've had a number of buy-to-let properties and I found 2008 to 2013, very difficult times, um, struggling to, to cope with high mortgage payments and rents that weren't increasing. Luckily for me, I um, got through that, but many people didn't. So 
the first part of this billionaire's property investment secret is to recognize that the property market is cyclical. Property doesn't always go up in value. It goes up and it goes down. And if you're actually investing in properties and buying them, because property, as we all know, is a very liquid asset, it's hard to shift if, it, if, if the market dips, market dries up, you can be left out of control and basically you're taken wherever the market wants to go. But if you contrast that with how banks operate, has anyone ever wondered why banks, with all the money they have, don't just go out and invest in buy-to-let property themselves or develop themselves? Well, they don't. They lend money to investors and developers, but they keep control. They lend the money. If anything goes wrong with that, they step in. They're the first people to get paid out on that investment if it goes wrong. Um, and as we'll see later, it gives them control over the investment. It makes it a lot more liquid for them, and they can get in and out a lot easier. So if, like me, you think property is a, a suitable vehicle to provide for your retirement, ask yourself this. Do you want to do it the traditional way, where you go and put down a 25% deposit on a property, get a 75% mortgage, and you're subject to the vagaries of the market going up or down? Or do you, would you prefer to invest in a way that gives you control in exactly the same way that banks have control over the property market when they give you a mortgage? So during that recession in 2008, short-term secured borrowing or bridging was one of the few areas of investment that abs was absolutely thriving. Um, as reasons for that, it's basically, it enabled financial companies and um, wealthy people to keep lending money to businesses, um, people who are borrowing. Just, just give you a basic explanation of what secured lending is. It's when a business owner or otherwise a property owner, wants to borrow money for a short period. So it works in exactly the same way as a mortgage. It's secured at the land registry by a legal charge. Um, but whereas a mortgage, the borrower is typically playing a, small, a, a low rate of interest over a much longer period, of say 20, 25 years, with the bridging industry, because they need the money for a short term, they're paying a much higher rate of interest. Okay, so it's typically six to 12 month loan period. They pay a much higher rate of interest in exchange for the flexibility um, and the, the speed at which they can get access to the money. But the key thing to recognize is that it is protected in exactly the same way as a mortgage, secured at a suitable loan to value against the borrower's physical property. So it enabled people who had the money to invest in this market back in 2008 the ability to carry on investing and make fantastic returns, probably higher returns than you can do now, even in, you know, when the rest of the financial world was in utter turmoil. So one reason why we've called this um, seminar the Billionaire's Property Investment Secret is my, my colleague over there, David, has a, has a friend who manages around half a billion pounds worth for, for a particular billionaire. And out of that 500 million pounds, that billionaire's specified that 350 million of that each year should be put into secured lending. And he does that because he recognizes that, it, well, for him, it gives him the optimum ratio of risk and reward. You get a very attractive return plus the security of your money being secured. If things go wrong, which they do, um, if something goes wrong, you've got the physical asset to fall back on and sell and recover your money. So over the course of the last three or four years, with companies like ours coming, to the, um, coming up and make, making this sort of opportunity available to retail investors, family offices have been piling money into it, financial institutions are in, investing tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of pounds in peer-to-peer -peer, um, companies like ours. And so I'd put it to you, you know, if they see the sense in doing this and they can see the benefits of these investments, is it not worth your while you looking into it um, for yourself and seeing if it's something that appeals to you? So I said, we've made it accessible to everybody now. Our particular platform, you can invest from 1,000 pounds. You've got 10,000, you can easily diversify over a number of different properties. To give you an example of how it works, this is one of our typical deals. This is a road called St. Thomas Road in Islington. 
Um, the borrower came to us. He wanted, as a business owner, he wanted a six-month loan for his property. So typically, we look at the application. We do due diligence on them, AML checks, what have you, on them and their solicitor. We instruct a, um, a RICS valuation on the property to find out what it's worth. Um, we then continue to do legal due diligence. Our solicitor does the legal due diligence on the title um, to decide whether, it's, um, whether we want to go ahead with it. If we decide to make the loan, we then manage the borrower throughout the period of the loan. And if he repays on time, that's great. You get your money back, you get your interest, and you're free to reinvest it. If, as does happen, and bearing in mind we're, we're operating in a market where you're getting a very high rate of interest on your money. So there are late payments and there are defaults. All that information is published on our website and it's completely transparent. But let's assume he doesn't pay on, back on time for whatever reason. Well, you immediately go on to a higher interest rate, which compensates you for the late payment. We go through a court process to repossess the property and sell it. So when we, when we make a loan, what we do is, as with a bank, when they grant you a mortgage, they will, you know, well, they used to go up to 110%, Northern Rock did, well, that, and that's probably not a very sensible strategy. Um, most banks will go up to, say, 75% loan to value. Some may go up to 80%. We, we, our average loan to value is in the, the high 60s, and we believe that gives a reasonable comfort level so that should the borrower default, the property have to be repossessed. You know, in the space of 12 months, you have to figure out, well, in this case, the property was worth 950,000, we lent 600,000. So it's a 63% loan to value. So your security here essentially is, if that borrower defaults, which he didn't, but if he had, then, and we had to repossess the property, do you think it's worth taking the risk of that property not being able to be sold for 63% of its valuation in the time? Because it gives you a 37% comfort drop there it may happen, you know. You could have a terrible situation where the property falls by 50%. You have to decide for yourself whether you think that is a likely scenario and whether you are prepared to accept that risk. But what I will say is there's nothing else to me that offers such the high rewards that peer-to-peer -peer lending, can, secured lending can give you with the upside and the security. If that property fell by 50% value, well, sorry, let, let me compare it. If you'd bought that property with a 25% mortgage and it fell by just 25% in value and the bank repossessed it, you've lost all your money, every single penny. If it falls by 50%, you've lost all your money and the bank will pursue you for the rest of the money that it's lost and it can pursue you for 12 years, it can make you bankrupt. If on the other hand, you're investing like a billionaire on this and it falls by 50%, yes, you've lost 20% of your money but that's in a catastrophic event. Could happen, but you decide for yourself how likely it is for a property to fall in Islington by 50% in value in the space of 12 months. That's your security. So ultimately, I think every, everyone who hit, who's come here today is, is pretty switched on. Most of the population are burying their heads in the sand. They're not making provision for their retirement. They're not going to be able to retire at 65. They're probably not going to be able to retire at 75. They're going to have to work in menial jobs just to scrape by. So you've presumably made the decision that you don't want that to be you. You'd prefer to be this couple here going off on nice holidays where you, you know, your biggest decision is which bottle of wine to open for lunch. But what I will say is time is short. <coughs> You know, you have to take control of your finances. As I say, I'm sure you all realise that after coming here today. But no one else is going to do it for you. And just going back to that St Thomas Road example, because I forgot to mention it. Everyone think, what did people think of the security with that? Do you think it was a fairly decent level of security, 63%? Yeah. Getting a few nods. So given the fact it's a decent level of security, what kind of interest rate would you expect to get for that? 12%. 12%? Any, I should go back to when I was a lawyer, never ask a question you don't know the answer to. <laughs> right, so, um, you think 12%, well, yes, to be fair, that is the sort of interest rate that it, it does generate. We typically charge between 1% and 1.5% and a month, but then we've got broker fees to pay, we've got our costs and what have you. So what we paid investors on that deal was actually 8%. 
on average, over the last two years, we've paid our investors an average of 9.2% with no losses of capital whatsoever. Um, I'm not to say that will always continue, but we've lent over 60, no, we've, we've, we've invested over 67 million so far on behalf of our investors with no loss of capital on these peer-to-peer -peer loans. So to summarize, the billionaire's property investment secret is this. Lend money. Don't purchase your investments. There's really no need to. If you want to benefit from property, <laughs> lend the money. It gives you greater control, flexibility, and liquidity. Agree an attractive rate. Now, you may want your 12%. I believe there is one company out there where you can sometimes get 12%. I also understand they have a very high default rate. There are also some that offer 4 or 5% a much longer term thing. You have to choose what's right for you. As I said, typically our rates are 8, 9, 10%. Make sure it's secured against real bricks and mortar, because it's a, at the end of the day, it's a very stable asset. It's not like stocks and shares or Bitcoin, you know. It's, um, you make your choices. Do you want government bonds that pay you next, or a savings account that pay you next to nothing, which are, are you know, very, very safe? Or do you want Bitcoin that can make you 50 times your money in the space of a year but could explode at any minute? Up to you what you want to do. At a conservative loan to value, again, we, we think going up to 75% provides a reasonable comfort level. You might not agree. You might only want to go up to 60%. Well, therefore, select loans that only go up to 60% loan to value, and it will give you that extra level of comfort. It's for a short period. The longest loan we do is 12 months, so again, that helps deal with any dip in the market because property doesn't go down that quickly. You have to decide when you make that loan, is that property going to decline in value over that six to 12 month period and make your own decision. And what crowdfunding platforms like us allow you to do is invest very small amount, well not very small, but reasonably small amounts of money in every investment. So if you have four or five thousand pounds, you still you can spend it over three or four properties. You're not putting all your eggs in one basket. So again, it's very, very powerful and has opened this whole market up to many more people. And of course, if you want to be really sensible about it, compound your returns, reinvest your interest. And if you don't take anything else away um, from today, please go onto the internet, look up a compound interest calculator, and see for yourself how quickly it can grow your savings if you keep reinvesting the interest. This isn't unique to us, I'm sure you know. Anything, I, I did a quick calculation just before I came in here. Um, if you had a 10,000 pound lump sum, and you topped it up by 500 pounds a month, 6,000 pounds a year, at 9% interest, which is feasible via platforms like ours, and held that for 25 years, reinvesting the interest rate each year, you would have, when you came to retire, £649,000 by compounding your interest. It is immensely powerful, and you really should work out what it could mean for you, and it will influence your whole investment decisions. Um, so if you'd like to learn more about property crowdfunding industry, peer-to-peer -peer secured lending, which is all sort of part and parcel, the same thing. I've written a, a book that explains in very simple terms how the industry works. It lists the major platforms in there, how they operate, what the differences are between them. Um, it's available on Amazon. And if you'd like to join 15,000 of our um, happy members, then that's our website, and we're always very happy to help you. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>